Hello everybody, this is Ramses, bringing you another episode of the Vesper Gaming. I'm going to do another solo NES wrestling gameplay. This is WWF WrestleMania. It was released in 1989, right before WrestleMania 5. This game was made by Acclaim, and it was developed by Rare. Yes, that Rare. So this is, actually has some interesting names behind it. And it's known as the first real WWF game that was on the market. There was another one on a computer, turn-based, but this is the first real WWF game we got that let you play as the wrestlers and control them. And uh, I guess you gotta start somewhere. It's the first licensed game on the NES. We had some other wrestling games like Muscle Tag Team Wrestling and Pro Wrestling games, but this is the first real, let's get excited, we get Hulk Hogan, we get to use all these other wrestlers we've been watching in WrestleMania all these years. Hooray. And it should be noted that tagline here, bigger, better, better. That was famous from WrestleMania 3. Everyone always wonders, why are they saying bigger, better, better on a WrestleMania game when it's the first WWF wrestling game on the system? So in case you're always wondering why does it say that, that's why it says that. So let's have a little fun. I'll do a complete playthrough. We'll see how it goes. It's, a, it's not the easiest game to play, but it can be fun at time, and it's more nostalgic than fun, I guess is the right way to put it. All right, hold on. Let's load everything up here. So here you go, you have options. You have a standard mode and a tournament mode, and that's it. You can play six players in a tournament mode, you can play standard, which is just a one match and that's it, or the tournament, which is for the title, and you go against all wrestlers in the game. So you can enter your name. It's a six character name, and this is just to signify who you are, especially if you're playing with other people. It has the million dollar man Ted DiBiase. Bam Bam Bigelow. The Honky Tonk Man. Randy Macho Man Savage. Andre the Giant, and of course the champion Hulk Hogan, who I think is who I'm going to use. We do a lot of Hulk Hogan related stuff here, I'm going to use Hulk Hogan, why not? So you always go in the same order, you fight Million Dollar Man first, he's the quote unquote easiest in the game, and you go in order. It's always the same row of wrestlers you fight, except you don't fight yourself, so they just skip the wrestler you're using and skip to the next one in the pattern of wrestlers. All right, so you have basic kicks and punches. It's not a very in-depth game. No background, the ring is even cut in half here. You can see the ropes are going to the side. Pretty much, uh, you can run if you uh, push the direction button like this, and you can do a drop kick with Hogan. You can even do a body slam by pushing both buttons like that, but that won't work on later wrestlers. In this match, you can get away with all your moves. As the game goes on, you'll see you're not gonna get many of those moves off. But yep, you can body slam, and that's a hard move to do. You gotta be lined up just right like this, and then you can body slam, but don't get used to it, folks. It's not gonna happen much. We're in a uh, empty <laughs> arena for some reason. It's just a black background. It's surprising because wrestling games that came before this one had better effects than this in the background So I don't know why they couldn't put some people circles Anything in the background just to make it look like we're actually fighting somewhere. It's very strange with how they went about this And you can actually climb on the ropes, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to I'll try but it's hard to get uh, on the ropes You can do some leaping moves with some of the wrestlers, but it's very very hard You have to push B and direct yourself exactly right if you push the A and B button at the same time you can do an elbow so it's very limited on what our moves are. It's pretty much just punch, kick, and throw every now and then, and that's the whole game. You can do a headbutt like that. Very simplistic game. You can see this was as basic as it gets. The characters actually look good, though. A lot of people uh, don't like the overall play of this game, but I think the characters look like they're supposed to. That's the one good thing I'll say of this game. And you hear the music in the background. And it's interesting to note every wrestler's theme is in here, except for wrestlers that didn't have their own theme, so they just gave them different songs. So Million Dollar Man's song here was actually Girls in Cars. I think that was supposed to be his song originally. They gave it to Strike Force, which was a tag team in wrestling at the time. As you know, Million Dollar Man got his own theme, Money, 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 Everybody Has a Price. But for now, he didn't have a song, because they didn't want to use this song for him. And uh, he just had no song until they came up with his own theme that he sang later on, and it fit very well. But for now, they're just using Girls in Cars for him, so... It's owned by WWF, so they can use whatever song they want, and uh, they recreated it pretty well here. And of course, Hogan's theme sounds great, you know, real American. Let's finish up DiBiase here. Now the pin, it's different for every wrestler. I know it's strange, you would think, oh, you just push the button, nope. For Hulk Hogan, you push B and up or down when you're over the wrestler, and it's very hard to get, because they have to be down on the ground, you have to be positioned just right to get them. But for Hogan, it's B and down or up when you're over the wrestler, and they have to have zero energy. You cannot try to pin them if they have any energy. 
So that's another thing. And they keep restoring energy. So you can see why this game is a real hog to play at times. They keep restoring energy. You have to line yourself just right. You got to push a certain button combination. Some have A and up and some have B and up for their pin. I don't know why they changed it. I guess they were being creative for whatever reason. But let's try to pin him here. Nope, he didn't stay down long enough. There we go. All right, so you get a count and that should do it. Like I said, the first match is very simple. And then you get a well done screen. We beat the million dollar man, yay. It's simple fun, it's not a great game, definitely not. But you gotta start somewhere, as I keep saying, and uh, that's the best thing I can say with this game. You gotta start somewhere, right? All right, so you get Hogan Steam, yay, we won. You got the stars flashing. And now we moved up the ladder. So that was Million Dollar Man. He's the first. You always fight him first unless you use Million Dollar Man himself. And then next in the list will always be Bam Bam Bigel. There he is. All right, now Bam Bam's tougher because he and Andre are known as the heavier, and I'll use that word to be nice, the heavier wrestlers in the game. You can't really get up close. They're powerful. They take off a lot. They want to get up close and personal. So for them, you're just gonna have to resort to some other tricks. You gotta kick them a lot. You gotta play keep away. Yep, like this, just keep beating him, run away a little bit, try a drop kick. Nope, didn't work. That's another thing, when you use the drop kick, sometimes it'll knock them down, sometimes it won't. When they're lower on energy, usually it'll drop them down, but not always. So that's another thing to be aware of. Yeah, we're going to try to get him quickly here, because if he gets up, it's going to become messy here. So you see those things bouncing? Those are energy refills. And you see those fire emblems? That's specifically for Bam Bam. Every character has their own energy refills. It'll put one or two bars back in your energy meter if you collect them. Of course, Hogan has the cross, or the X, as they call it in the instructions. They don't want to use a religious term. But, you know, Hogan always wore his cross, and it's notable that Andre ripped that off in a pre-WrestleMania 3 Piper's Pit that they had, so that's probably why he's associated with the cross now. But it's called the X in the instructions. We don't want to use the wrong word here. It's not a cross. All right, let's try to finish him off here. He's low on energy. We're both low on energy, so this can go either way. Let's try. Nope, can't get over him. So you have to position yourself just right. There it is. That was a sweet spot, and that should do it. Yep, yeah, there we go. So, so far, we have had pretty good luck here. So that was Bam Bam Bigelow. So as you see, there's nothing much to the game. You're kicking, you're punching, you do headbutts, you can maybe do a body slam, you can run off the ropes and drop kick. That's about the whole game right there, that's it. Oh, you can do the elbow. When you're standing away from them, if you push A and B, you'll do an elbow behind you, and you can do like a rapid attack with that. All right, so this is Hockey Talk Man. He's uh, known for being the longest reigning intercontinental champ in WWF history, or WWE now. And he's going to be fast and in your face. He's going to slap at you. He's going to keep punching. As you go through this game, the wrestlers get much harder. You know, that's another thing. The AI gets tougher. It's going to be harder. And you get only one chance to beat them. If you lose the match, that's it. You have three minutes for each match, by the way. And if there's no winner after the three minutes, guess what happens? It goes to a draw. And you get an automatic rematch. I have no idea why they did this. I don't know why it's a three-minute limit instead of an unlimited. It makes no sense to me. But yep, if you reach three minutes and nobody has won, it'll just start the match all over again from start. At least you don't lose, I guess that's a good thing. Alright, so here's a strategy that sometimes works with Honky Tong. I just like to do the jumps off the ropes. I don't like to get too up and close and personal with him because he's very vicious. So if I just keep doing some running, see like that, yeah, he does those sonic elbows. Oh wow, I actually got a body slam off. See, I tried for it and it worked. Well, actually, I'm doing pretty well against Honky. He's actually tough. Let's see if I can finish him off here. Those, yep, there we go. Those flying jumps off the uh, rope, those are very effective. So that's my strategy with Honky, and it worked very well. And that body slam didn't hurt either. And sometimes you get lucky like that. But yeah, this is not a long or in-depth game. I just wanted to show you what the first licensed WDF game on the NES looked like. All right, so now we have fan favorite Randy Macho Man Savage against Hogan. This is a classic match that was happening in WrestleMania 5 around the time the game is released. So everyone should be familiar with this. I think Macho Man was still the face at this time when this game was made, but he was heel, of course, by the time WrestleMania 5 happened. 
All right, so now with Savage, he plays keep away a lot, and that's what they're gonna do in this game in the later levels. They're gonna keep running away from you. You have to be face to face with them. They can't be on different planes. Like if he's above me and I'm below him, you can't do anything. You're just gonna spin around and not do anything. So there you see, I tried a drop kick. It didn't work because he had too much energy. And then the Sonic elbows work well when you get up and they're still standing near you. That's an effective move to use. But there's another thing I should tell you. When you're using all these moves, your energy depletes too. So you see, Hogan's energy keeps depleting when I'm doing all these fast kicks by pushing the B button so quickly. Or you do those elbows by pushing A and B. You lose energy on that too. So that's why this game is very unforgiving. You have to use your own energy to use all these moves that you have to use to beat up the wrestler. It's very unfair in that aspect. So you gotta be really lucky that everything just works. But Macho Man actually plays like Macho Man you would expect. He does elbows, he's flying around. He actually has a rope move, that's his signature move. And there's sunglasses, that's uh, Macho Man's energizer. Like I said, the cross was for Hogan. Of course, Macho Man gets his sunglasses, because that's what he's known for, wearing those cool sunglasses. Nice, right, so I'll try the drop kick routine with him too. It worked well with Honky Tonk. He has fast attacks, let's see if this works. Alright, so yeah, he's playing keep away, I got, he's spinning around, you gotta line him up just right. Yes, there we go. Alright, we'll just keep trying the drop kick, that's my strategy. When all else fails, kick him. <laughs> but like I said, it doesn't always knock him down, as you saw there. But when it does, it works pretty well. Alright, let's keep running around here. Yes, got him. And you'll see the wrestlers glow sometimes. That's when they're getting angry. When you start to beat up on a wrestler, or you get beat up, you can glow too. You'll start to glow this pink hue. That means you're getting very angry, you've been beat up, and now you're stronger. I guess you could think of it like when Hogan used to psych himself up, when he got knocked down, he'd get all angry, and he was supercharged. I guess that's what they're going for with this whole glowing effect here that some of the wrestlers can do. Like the Hogan supercharge, you can't beat me, and nothing hurts him. I think that's what they were doing here. Good try, but only Hogan should be able to do that. It's, it's funny watching wrestlers like Honky Tonk or Andre getting all pumped up because they got beat up. That doesn't exactly happen with them. Alright, so he's spinning around. I can't get up. We're both out of energy. If I can get a pin, we're gonna go for it. Sometimes you gotta give them some extra blows because they keep restoring their energy fast. As you get later in the game, the enemy AIs can restore faster than you can. Uh oh, he's pinning me. So I gotta push up to try to get up and it worked. So you push up on the D-pad, and you might get lucky. It's very hard to get up in this game, but if you push up on the D-pad, you can actually get up from a pin, or try to. Now I want to pin him, because I want to get out of here. And there we go. Well, that was actually a fun match, if you think about it. All right, so we're already speeding through this game. That was Macho Man Randy Savage, and that was actually a fun match. That was pretty in-depth. That was actually uh, what you would hope to see in a wrestling game. So that one actually worked out pretty well. Most of the times, Hogan will be the last match because he's the champion, but since I'm using Hogan, Andre the Giant is the last match, which makes sense. That was the big match of WrestleMania 3, Hogan vs. Andre. And Andre is not too difficult, but he's, uh, yeah, like this, he's very annoying. He has a long reach, he won't let you get any moves if you don't hit him first. He'll swipe at you and punch at you. So he's just annoying. He's not harder than in some of the other wrestlers I fought here, but he's just annoying. Now you're the one that wants to play keep away from him. Put in a few punches and kicks here, mostly kicks. You don't want to use punch because they're short range. So put in a few kicks every now and then and then run away like this. Let him get back up and then refresh, reposition yourself, kick him a few times and try to avoid those huge swipes that he does. The elbows work well too. Now you have to resort to that if all else fails. So see, he's hulking up now. He's glowing, he's angry, I've been beating up on him. So if he starts hitting me, it's gonna be uh, very dangerous. He'll, he'll take off a lot more. So there we go, we got the elbows. You can get those crosses, that'd be nice, so that'll restore energy. For Andre, they gave him a foot icon, by the way. So yeah, he has a giant foot as his. And it should be noted that Andre's song is actually Stand Back, and it was sung by Vince McMahon. Andre never had a song, he didn't need a song, he's Andre the Giant. So for this game, they just gave him a song that's owned by the WWF. And it's called Stand Back. Vince McMahon sung it. You should look it up. It's actually quite amusing watching Vince McMahon singing this song. And actually, the name of that song sounds appropriate for Andre. Stand Back. He's a huge guy. Keep away from him. So they actually picked an interesting song for Andre. But everyone else's themes is pretty much their own, except for DiBiase and Andre. Everyone has their theme songs that they were associated with at this time. Because theme songs didn't really become big until a little later when all the gimmicky wrestlers came around and everyone had a song. 
But here, not every wrestler had a song. That's just how it was. If you had a song, cool, the fans get excited, but not everybody had an entrance theme like they did much later on in wrestling years. And all the music sounds great. I think that's probably the best part of this game is the music. Like, the play control you can see is awful. You have two moves, basically, or three moves. You're running around, it's awkward to control. You have to be standing just right in front of each other to do any moves. I'm running around here. I'm not getting very close. I mean, look at this. So, yes, there's nothing good that can be said about the play control of this game. It's awful, actually. To do this whole, you have to stand in just the right spot and push B and down or A and down to pin, that's awkward, too. It should be a lot easier than that. But the music is great. The theme never sounded better. I mean, it's really good. You want NES renditions of Real American or Honky Tonk Man's theme or even Macho Man's Pomp and Circumstance? Have I got the game for you? That's one of the best things about this game is listening to the music done in 8-bit renditions. I love 8-bit versions of songs when they sound good. I mean, there's some awful sounding 8-bit renditions of songs in some games. But this one, they got all the wrestling music right. And even the generic music's pretty good in this game. So they definitely did a good job with the sound effects and music. I just wish they did a little better with the graphics and gameplay and controls and some other aspects. And I wish I could say it gets much better for uh, wrestling games on the NES, but it really doesn't, for WWF games at least. So we're in for a treat as we look at more of those eventually. All right, this match is going long. You know, this might go the three minute limit, so I guess I'll get to show you what happens when you reach that three minute limit if I can't pin him here. So that's cool to show what happens when you both go three minutes and there's no winner. I think that's going to happen. We have five seconds left here. So, yep, looks like it's pretty much going to be a draw here. You have a rematch when you have a draw. If your three minutes is up, you get a rematch. So let's do that again. This time I want to go a little faster. Let's try a different strategy because running around did not work at all. I'm going to go for a more up close and personal and try to finish this off here. Let's see if we can get... Nope, the elbow's not working there. Here's that long reach. So this is the last match. This is for everything. This is the championship. So if I can beat Andre, we got it. And I should note also, if you lose, that's it. It's game over. You got to start the tournament all over. You get rematches for tying, but that's it. You do not get to rematch if you lose the match and get pinned. You have to pin. It's winner take all in this tournament. All right, so this is working. Yeah, I'm just going to keep elbow. You have to mash the A and B quickly. You notice my energy is going down too, so this is a risky move. And if I move up, maybe I can get those crosses that they come by. Uh, yeah, you just got to keep elbowing him. This works. Oh, good. I got energy back. If I can get the pin, this might work. I didn't intend on this strategy, but you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you get lucky. There, there we go. If I got it, I got it. Sometimes you get lucky in this game. Things just fall into place. There you go. Just like that. Hogan beat Andre. So I didn't expect that to happen, and it was just a weird strategy, fluky thing. But that's a great way to show you how weird this game is. Andre says he's big, bad, powerful, the main guy of the game if you're using Hogan. And yeah, we went through him like nothing. I mean, we had to do a rematch, but we changed strategies up. So that is WrestleMania. It's a 15 minute experience, there's not much to it. Maybe 12 minutes, I was being generous with 15 with that uh, rematch I had, but yeah. Very short game, not exciting, it has 6 wrestlers in total. Here's what you get for winning the tournament. Well done, you are the new world champion. And that's cool, that is actually pretty graphically impressive. That's a pretty good uh, recreation of the world title done in NES format. So I will give them that. The graphics are pretty good on that. That looks like the real thing. But that's what it's all about. We're heavyweight wrestling champion now. We went through all five of the opponents. And unfortunately, that's the whole game. You play standard mode and just do one-on-one, -on -one, but you get absolutely nothing for playing it. This is the only goal of the game. Use one of the six wrestlers, beat the other five, get this title. That's it. So you can see why this game is not really praised or loved. I mean, it's such a basic nothing game that really doesn't provide much. You're doing all this to win a picture of a belt. The gameplay is awful at times. You're very limited on the moves. Yeah, it's not a great game. When you have other games like Pro Wrestling and Tecmo Wrestling, which all pull it off so much better than this ever could dream of. So I guess we gotta give it a little leeway that it did the best it could. All right, so let's see what else we get. We get a blue screen that has some credits. So let's see. Well, I guess we can see why this game is so basic. This is every single person that worked on this game. You can see, what, it's like 10 people. Uh, but Rare made it, like I told you. All right, and that's it. That was WWF WrestleMania on the NES, a solo gameplay. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. We'd like to see you around here. I'll have more NES games on the way. And uh, yeah, I want to play some more of these. This has been a lot of fun looking back at some of these old NES wrestling games here. Be sure to look for me in the Vespa soon. We'll be back for more co-ops. Me and him will be back for more solo plays too. Thanks a lot. Take care, everybody.